the most Earth-like of the planets, the most likely to have developed forms of life, and probably the first to be visited by humans, Mars continues to be a focus of planetary exploration. Mars shows a variety of geological phenomena like volcanism, like polar caps, like transparent atmosphere, like glaciers that are only shared with the Earth. These are the two planets in the whole solar system to have these features. Radar sounders aboard ESA's Mars Express and NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiters have already detected ice deposits deep underground. And now, after a 10-month journey, NASA's Phoenix Laboratory probe will continue the search for water. Its objective is to land in a permafrost region near the North Pole. Its suite of instruments will scan the atmosphere and a robotic arm will attempt to dig down to an ice-rich layer expected to be at arm's reach below the surface. About uh, 3.8 billion years ago, the surface of Mars had uh, significant episodes of liquid water on its surface. But suddenly at that time there was a big uh, climate change on Mars. So water was no longer possible on its surface and presumably it took refuge below the surface. This is what we are also trying to look with Mars Express that allows us to look below the surface down to about uh, five kilometers uh, deep. And we have indeed identified some layers of uh, water ice, not liquid. But water is not the sole element that could have harbored life on the red planet. Vittorio Formizano, investigator on Mars Express, believes like many scientists that methane could establish a link between life on Earth and what may be on Mars. You know, on Greenland, Greenland has uh, two, three kilometers of uh, ice on top and they have been uh, doing a study with the depth in the ice. They have found that in the bottom of the ice, in the last uh, few hundred meters, were extremely rich of methane and there were living bacteria there. These are bacteria that don't need atmosphere. Formizano's spectrometer on Mars Express has already found traces of methane in the atmosphere. His team in Rome is now trying to work out exactly where the gas is coming from. Methane uh, cannot stay forever in the Martian atmosphere. On Mars it was said that methane had a lifetime of uh, the order 300, 600 years. That implies that methane is destroyed, therefore there must be a source of methane. Now, on Earth it's well known that the source of methane is mostly life. However, bacteriological activity is not the only possible source of methane. It could stem from volcanic activity, minerals or water ice and carbon dioxide being bombarded by energetic particles from space. Even if methane is generated by life, you need to go on Mars uh, to search for life, uh, to find it and to study locally. So whilst orbiting spacecraft like Mars Express continue to harvest global views, in-situ observations on the surface remain necessary, like those of NASA's Phoenix stationary probe or ESA's ExoMars mobile laboratory due to launch in 2011. The most important element of a rover is a drill. And this is because we believe that in order to address the scientific objectives of the mission, we have to look in the subsurface, underground. We're looking for organic molecules that we can either associate with uh, processes that are important for cellular life, or we are looking also for uh, residues, organic residues of uh, possible life molecules corresponding to life that may have disappeared a long time ago. The critical entry, descent and landing phase of the Phoenix probe will, at NASA's request, be getting ESA support. The agency's two deep space tracking stations will be providing high precision trajectory data. Mars Express itself has also adjusted its orbit to track and receive data from Phoenix as it arrives. The European orbiter's high-resolution stereo camera could, if lucky, get a glimpse of the incandescent probe and two other instruments will characterize how its descent is affected by the Martian atmosphere.